In this video, I'm going to use Vojo's approximation method to find the initial basic feasible solution of the transportation problem, and that is three sources F1, F2, and F3, three destinations A, B, C. So, given uh, that uh, transportation problem, we want to make allocations in these unoccupied cells. So, to make those allocations, we have to evaluate uh, the penalties. The penalty will be the difference of the smallest and the next smallest unit cost. So I'll calculate penalties for the rows, then penalties for the columns. Looking at uh, the first row where we have the F1 there, the smallest cost and the next smallest unit cost there, we are having the 200 and the 260. So the, their difference there will be a 60. For the row where we have F2, the smallest and the next smallest, we are having these two values here, and their difference is a 40. For the row where we have F3, the smallest and the next smallest are these ones here, and their difference is a 160. We now go on to the column A. For column A, the smallest and the next smallest are these ones here, and their difference is a 200. For column B, the smallest and the next smallest are these ones here, and their difference is a 160. For column C, the smallest and the next smallest are these ones here, and their difference there is an 80. We then go on and look at the largest penalty. The largest penalty is here, this 200. The 200 was the penalty for column A. So we look into column A and look for the smallest unit cost in column A. That's this 200 here. So we have to allocate in this cell here. To see how much we can allocate there, we consider the supply constraint and the demand constraint there a four. Take the minimum of the four and the six, it's a four. So we have to allocate four units here. And when we allocate four units here, we would have met the demand for that destination A here. So we can no longer allocate any more in column A. So cross out and cross out here, indicating we can no longer allocate since the demand there has been met. I will also go on and cross out here, here, and here, indicating that we are no longer calculating penalties for the column A. But looking at uh, the row where we had F1, its supply constraint is a 6. We only allocated four. So that means we are left with two more units to allocate. So I'll just write a two to indicate we have two more to allocate there. We now go on to the next step, calculating the penalties for the rows. But now we are excluding the cells where there is an allocation or that have been crossed out. So for row where we have F1, we are having these two unit costs, and their difference there is a 100. For the row where we have F2, we are looking at these two, their difference is a 40. For the row where we have F3, we are looking at these two, their difference there is a 260. We go on to column B there, the smallest and the next smallest, they are these ones here, and their difference is 160. For column C, the smallest and the next smallest are these ones here, their difference is an 80. We then go on and look for the largest penalty. The largest penalty is this one here, the 260. The 260 is the penalty for row F3. So we look in row F3 and look for the smallest unit cost is the 240 here. So we have to allocate in this cell. To see how much we can allocate, we consider the supply constraint, it's an 8. The demand constraint, it's a 7. Take the minimum of the 7 and 8, so we have to allocate 7 units there. But the moment we allocate 7 units there, we have reached the demand for this column C. So we can no longer allocate any more in column C, so I'll cross out all the other cells there. So I'll cross out here and cross out here to indicate we can no longer allocate there. And I'll also go on and cross out where we are supposed to write the penalties there. Cross out here, cross out here, cross out here, cross out here to indicate we are no longer calculating the penalties there since uh, 
the demand there has already been satisfied. But if we are looking at the row where we are having the F3 there, we only allocated 7, but there is 8. That means we are left with allocating one more unit there. So that's one, that one there is indicating we have one more unit left to allocate in row F3. I now go on to the next step, calculating the penalties again, but excluding the sales on that have an allocation or that have been crossed out. So for the row where we have F1, we only have this value here, so that will be our penalty, the 360. For row where we have F2, we only have this value here, so that will be our penalty, so we write 200 there. And for the row where we have F3, we only have the 500 there, so that will be our penalty, 500. Now look at the columns. For the columns, we are only left with column B there. For the column B, the smallest and the next smallest are these ones, and their difference is 160. We go on and look at the largest penalty. The largest penalty there that we are having is a 500. The 500 is the penalty for row F3. So that means we have to allocate in row F3, and the only cell in row F3 that we have to look at is this cell. To see how much we can allocate, we consider the supply constraint. It was an 8, but we have a 1 left. The demand constraint is an 8. And then we take the minimum of the 8 and the 1, so we have to allocate 1 unit there. And when we allocate 1 unit there, it already had 7, so it's now 8. So we have now reached the supply constraint there, which is an 8. That means we can no longer allocate any more in row F3. So I'll cross out where we have the penalties here cross out, cross out, to indicate we are no longer calculating the penalties for row F3. But if we look at uh, column B there, column B is a demand constraint of 8, we only allocated 1. That means we still have 7 more to allocate for column B there. So I now go on to the next step there, calculating the penalties, excluding the sales where we have an allocation or where we have crossed out. So for the row where we have F1, we only have that 360 here, so that should be our penalty. For the row where we have F2, we only have the 200, so that should be our penalty there. For the row where we have F3, we are not calculating. We go on to the columns. For the columns, we are having column B there. The smallest and the next smallest are these ones there. Their difference there is a 160. So we look at the largest penalty there, and the largest penalty we see that is a 360. The 360 is corresponding to row F1. So we have to allocate in row F1, and the cell that we can allocate there is this one here. To see how much we can allocate, we consider the supply constraint. It was a 6, but we are left with 2, and the demand constraint, we are having a 7. So we take the minimum of the 2 and the 7, and the minimum there is a 2, therefore we have to allocate 2 units in this cell. And the moment we allocate 2 units there, we already had 4, so it has now reached the supply constraint is 6, so we can no longer allocate anymore in row F1. So I'll cross out where we have the penalties there, cross out to indicate we will no longer evaluate the penalties for row F1. But if we look at our column B there, we had allocated a 1, then allocated 2, but uh, we were left with a 7 there. So what is now left there would be the 7 minus 2, so it would be 5. So we are still have to allocate 5 more units there in column B. Then I now move on to the next step, which is to calculate the penalties now for row F2. For row F2, we are just having this 200, so we'll be having the penalty there is a 200. For column B, we are having the 200 there, so that will be our penalty there. In this case, we are having the penalties there, 200, 200. So if we have a tie, we start first with penalties which are in the rows. So in this case, the penalty that we have to look at is this one here, which you are saying is the penalty for row F2. So we do look at row F2, and the cell that we have to allocate is this one here. To see how much we have to allocate, we consider the supply constraint is a 5. 
the demand constraint we had an eight but we are left with five so we'll be looking at the five there so it's just a five and a five so we would have to allocate five units in this cell and when you allocate the five units we would have satisfied the supply constraint there of a five so i'll cross out here to say we will no longer calculate a penalty there and cross out here because we will no longer calculate the penalty for column b in this case now what we are having every cell has got an allocation or has been crossed out so we just have an interpretation of what we are having there so i'll draw a table which is destination allocation and cost we are saying from f1 to a we are allocating four units four units at a unit cost of 200 so the cost will be four times 200 which gives us 800 from f1 to b we are allocating two units two units at a unit cost of 360 the cost will be two times 360 which gives us 720 from f2 to b we are allocating five units five units at a unit cost of 200 the cost will be five times 200 which gives us 1000 from f3 to b we are allocating one unit one unit at a unit cost of 500 the cost will be one times 500 which gives us 500 from f3 to c we are allocating seven units seven units at a unit cost of 240 it will give us at the cost there is seven times 240 which is 1680 we then go on and add the costs which are in this column here and when we add those costs the total that we get there is 4700 so the initial basic feasible solution using the Voges approximation method is this one here and it is giving a cost of 4700